The scandalous revelations from the book No Māori Allowed highlighted the era of segregation in Pukekohe on the southern edge of Tamaki Makoto. It brought to light the details of cruel race-based separatism that discriminated against Māori. Now there's fresh calls from Fano, who are demanding action from the government, asking for an apology and a commemoration for the innocent lives that had no dignity in death. Mane to put all of Rwani Pereira. The Pukekohe Borough Building was the former council chambers at a time when the South Auckland Township was racially segregated. Today, it's where we bring retired nurse Julie Lewis and former teacher Phyllis Barner together for the first time. Phyllis has been one of the leading voices demanding a public apology for the horrific abuse and living conditions Fano endured for decades in Pukekohe. In May, Phyllis spoke to the Hui about the inhumane treatment of Māori Fano, who came to work in market gardens here. She's also been on a campaign to acknowledge the unmarked graves at the public cemetery. We weren't allowed to bury there. That was only for the Pākehā, the white people. Many of these are your own whānau. Yeah. Majority was through influenza. That's how my nephews died. Probably because of the housing they had back then. Phyllis's story captured the attention of Julie, who was so moved by what she saw, she felt compelled to contact Phyllis. My ears pricked up because my grandfather, Cuthbert Penny, was a market gardener here. Wow, yes. I can remember his face. Right. When the programme had finished, the first thought I had was, I must find Phyllis. I want to find Phyllis. And acknowledge the awful times that you and your family and other Māori workers went through. Um, I was horrified, to be honest. I'm glad you agreed to meet me. It sparked a need for Julie to find out more about her grandfather, Cuthbert Penny. I didn't know a lot about my grandfather. I don't know whether he had workers living on his market gardens. Hopefully I'll be able to find that out. But um, certainly if any of your family were affected by any of mine, I would be truly sorry for that. It's been over 20 years since Julie has been back in the town she was born and raised in. Everything is certainly so different. The only way we could tell. This one here, Priscilla. 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 Here in the Andrews. That's my oldest brother's daughter. Although the grandmothers are the same age, their upbringing couldn't be more different. Yet there's still an openness to learn from each other. My grandfather is buried here in the military part and my, my nana is over there somewhere. So at least I have a gravestone to visit, yeah. unlike, unlike parents of these ones. children here. Yeah. Mm. Julie says although she grew up here, she didn't realise Pukekohe was divided by race. They moved my cousins up to the Māori school and then they opened that school up just for the white. Uh, the there was a lot going on that I didn't know about yeah. as a child. <laughs> the racist attitude towards Māori was still there right up until I was at college. And hopefully it, it, it can come to terms with its past and become something different. There's been a renewed focus on acknowledging the town's uncomfortable history. In June, Phyllis and other mana whenua blessed this mural, Kumete, in honour of the children of Pukekohe, both past and present. That is the love I want to see come back to Pukekohe. So working together, not only adults with adults, but with the children too. That 
is magnificent. Recently, the government earmarked around $700,000 for establishing the design and delivery of a memorial at the cemetery to honour those buried without headstones. Someone's listening to those silent voices. It's about time. Taken a long time, but it started. And she was here for a number of years. She's now supporting Julie in her search to learn more, a reminder that it's never too late to acknowledge past injustices. If you hadn't done this programme, I wouldn't have known any of this. It's very emotional, <laughs> more than I thought. <laughs> yeah. Has it changed you? Yeah, I think I am a little bit more prepared to, to stand up and, and say something nowadays rather than let it slide. For me personally, I think it's important to work towards making a better future. And I hope that, you know, our future is more inclusive and understanding and tolerant. I take my hat off to her. It's very brave. I don't feel brave. I just think it's the right thing to do. For me, it's the right thing to do. Mm.